All right, so I've got my 89 Ford Ranger in again tonight, and uh, got the OBD-1 scan tool hooked up here. So you, down by the fuse box here, there'll be a little test port labeled. Uh, I just pop that out. You got these fancy plugins for both connectors there. When you come into your cab, and you plug the other end of the tool into your cigarette lighter there. So then we have this pretty fancy unit. It's got little cards you put in it. Get the right one. Turn your key on. Wait for it to warm up here. And then you just can select your vehicle. Tell it it's got, you know, there's, I've already put the truck in. Go to your dig, uh, data link. There's that. Tell it to start. Uh, trigger again. And there you go. And now you hit uh, exit. And now you can go to the powertrain. Diagnostic test modes. And we can do the self test, cycle self test, real quick. Let's start that. Oh. Start that. There's some codes. Two 11s. Let's see. Oh, so now that'll blink every time the engine light comes on, which is really funny. Oh, won't do it anymore. There it goes. All right, so now we got to stop. So now we got a system pass, separator code, and a system pass. Weird, I was getting a lean bank one earlier so then let's go let's exit them we'll do now we'll do a key on engine on test all right now i'm going to do a cylinder power balance test here let's get into that uh, start that oh nope, don't worry about that it's on so now i'm going to begin bring the throttle up I get upset with the check engine line. I'm guessing it's telling us testing. And we just sit and wait while it goes through this. So it's running really rough at this point. And it, it runs rough at that point specifically, and then it revs up like this. I'm not sure what exactly is happening, but I think the scan tool might be able to tell me why with it like with it showing an issue maybe it's an issue that's causing it to do that so now we should be close oh check engine light something stinks in here probably the truck perform a brief wide open all right oh it wants it again And there's my lack of O2, Rich. So I'm wondering if I have either an injector flooding, flooding the uh, a cylinder, or if I have an O2 sensor. I'm gonna have to look into getting that fixed. I might try throwing an O2 sensor at it, depending on the price. All right, today we jumped on Marco's little Miata here. We got the scan tool hooked up, just trying to see what we can see here. And it, he's got an OBD-1 car. So that's the one I used on my truck, but you know, so I, the hope was Ford, you know, being Ford and mixing things together, and it got it to work. We we told it it was an escort because these OBD1 tools come with these chips, and the chips will t like tell the computer what basically what they're looking for, and we only have Ford ones. So we're trying that, and I found this Snap-on one that we're gonna try in a minute where you we take those wires and probe them into the uh, DLC there. All right, so sadly, the snap-on scanner did not cut it. We do not have the correct chips for the tool itself to figure out what's going on. They're pretty neat, but I, I wish we had the Mazda. I don't know if they're somewhere in the building, but we had this whole diagram and everything. It was looking real promising, like we would be able to get it, but nope, couldn't do it. And then it kept thinking it was a Ford truck, so... Put that one to rest. You can hear him beeping at it. He's getting that working right now. I'll go over there and take a look at it. Take a look at what he's got. All right, here's what we got. 
we got a cam sensor circuit fault, a VAF, which is pretty much the math, higher or lower than expected, and an intake air temperature higher or lower than expected. So we're going to take the Pico, we're going to put it on both of those, we're going to inspect it and see if we're operating correctly to know for sure if that's actually what's happening. All right, we got the Pico hooked up here. Oh, we're doing the same thing. Yep. Um, idling, it is between one and two volts. And just to show that the map is working, the IET is kind of a mystery right now. Um, I mean, it goes up with temperature. It hasn't This green line has not moved. So we're going to rev it a little bit. Green is IAT. And if you oh, watch that blue, blue line. Is so it's definitely working. Um, math is not the problem. So we saw MAF was in, in between 1 and 2 volts. We come down here on our specs. That's what we should be seeing in between 1 and 2 at idle. So it appears to be correct. So we'll have to keep looking. He pulled that math out behind that uh, race filter he's got going on back there. Oh, he took it. He's currently oming it out right now. All right, I got the map from that car. And, you know, it looks fine exterior-wise, but it's hard to see way down in there. We've got our IAT and our MAF. And on our MAF, it's a hot wire type. And it looks like it's a little fuzzy, so we're trying to find something to clean it. You can almost see the little black piece of speck sticking off that right there. So we'll see, we'll see if we can get this cleaned up. Hopefully that'll improve the car's running ability. Alright, today we're working on Tanner's car. He says he's got a valve cover leak. He's, uh, so we got this all pulled off. You know, everything out of the way. Cleaned up the gas surface and as you can see, you know, these spark plug wells, full of oil. Just, you know, full of oil. So that's, that uh, definitely is a leak. And then we pulled the gasket out of the valve cover. All the, uh, it all broke and it was all brittle and cracking. So, just looking for some more TV and we'll put her back together.